Hi. Welcome to our virtual open house. I'm glad you could join us this morning here in Detroit, Michigan. We have students here, we have Eric and Ellen here, and my name is Sandra. We're going to have this uh, opportunity for you to look at videos, meet our dean, talk to our students, ask questions. Throughout the time here, when you have questions, there's an email that you can that's going to be spanned across the bottom of the PowerPoint uh, that you can send in your email questions to. Eric and Ellen will receive the questions and then ask our students. Okay, so welcome, and we'll start with hearing a welcome from our Dean Fatui. Hello, I am Farshad Fatui, the Dean of the College of Engineering at Wayne State University. Let me be the first to congratulate you on your admission to one of our many excellent graduate programs in the College of Engineering. As you know, we are located in Midtown, Detroit and Detroit is known for its auto industries. Companies such as Ford Motor Company, General Motors, and Fiat Chrysler are headquartered in the Detroit area. Many of our students taking advantage of our locations to enhance their academic experience with experiential learnings through programs such as internship and co-ops. I am positive with over 150 excellent faculty and staff it will provide you with enhanced academic experience that will lead to your future success. Again, congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you here in the fall. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Sandra Auerbeck. I'm joined with Eric and Ellen, and we have two students up here. So if you can introduce yourself and say what program you're in, where you're from, Hi everyone, my name is Palash Patewa. I'm pursuing my master's in electrical engineering. I started my program in fall 16 and this is my second semester here at Main State. I completed my undergrad in electronics and telecommunication engineering from Pune University. And after completion of my master's, I'm trying to pursue a career in industry and join from automotive uh, industry and pursue a career in embedded systems or related stuff. So that's for my introduction in brief. Hello everybody, I'm Javad Rustai. I'm a PhD candidate here in Wayne State University. I took my master as well here uh, in terms of environmental engineering. I came from Iran as a PhD student, but I took my master here as well. Uh, I'm doing data mining, data analysis regarding field of environmental engineering and some cool stuff that I will be happy to talk with you after this introduction. Thank you. We have another student that's going to be joining us, Elizabeth Steele. Uh, she'll be joining us shortly. And uh, so, Eric and Ellen, did you want to say hello? Sure. Hi. Again, Eric Smeka. Um, nice to meet you virtually. Uh, again, you can email us your questions live uh, at engineeringgradadmissions at eng.wayne.edu during this session. And uh, afterwards as well, if you have any questions that come to you after the session, that email address will get sent to Alan and I, and we can address any questions you may have. And um, in general, uh, I support the IC programs, the computer science programs, and the ECE programs primarily. Yeah, um, I'm Ellen. Uh, again, the engineering grad admissions at n.wayne.edu email comes to me as well. Um, I support essentially all the programs that Eric doesn't. So I work with mechanical engineering, alternative energy engineering, or alternative energy technology, excuse me, biomedical engineering, civil engineering, um, engineering technology, and electric drive vehicle engineering. Great, thank you. Okay, so we have a overview video right now. Throughout, throughout this talk, we're gonna be asking questions, we're gonna be answering questions, we're gonna be watching videos. So right now, we're just gonna watch a video. It's an overview of Wayne State.
So <clears throat> the College of Engineering has about 3,800 students in it, and about 1,500 of those are graduate students. Our graduate students come from all over the world, and about 30% are U.S. citizens, and the rest are international students, and they represent at least 36 countries. So the next video that we're going to show has a engineering tilt to it, and so we can play the next video. If you can collaborate with someone else, they can bring ideas to the table that you maybe haven't thought of, and you can use their knowledge and your knowledge combined to create something that's a better solution than either of you could come up perhaps individually. I got involved with Formula SAE uh, my freshman year here at Wayne State. I am the captain of the frame and body subsystems for the Formula SAE team, and then I am also the lead of the CAD team. Formula SAE cars are a lot like a big puzzle. It's very difficult for any one person to know about every system in great enough depth to actually design a vehicle. So it really works a lot like a small company where we have to tackle the same kinds of challenges that a business would to make a real product in the real world. You come into a corporation after graduating and you've already worked in a team environment like they're going to prepare you for. You're ahead of someone who hasn't had that experience. So there is this negative stereotype that engineers are antisocial or they just want to work in their labs, but the College of Engineering provides an experience that's completely different from that. The students here are very involved. Last summer, I volunteered as a camp instructor for the Tech Toys Camp, so we invited elementary school to high school age students to come into Wayne State and learn about engineering. I taught a specific camp called Creating Tech Toys, where we program with Lego robots. I definitely want to get younger kids involved and introduce them to the world of engineering because I didn't get to see that until my high school years. It opens up a whole world for them. There's like a lot, a lot of opportunities that engineering can give you. When you see students who want to do what you do and they're like, I want to be you when I grow up, it's kind of like, oh wow, you know, I made a difference. I think working with younger students and doing community service has been very helpful towards making me aware of my surroundings and making me a more compassionate person. You're contributing something out into the world. I was drawn to research because you're doing something new, something that's never been done before and you're kind of pioneering your way for others to follow and um, push that research even further. Our lab is uh, defined as a biomaterials and tissue engineering lab. We can study cell morphology, cell behavior, cell metabolism, and uh, discover and pioneer ways that we can cultivate tissue growth. And this can be applied to um, research, be applied to regenerative medicine if you want to um, help rebuild tissues that are otherwise damaged. What I like about research is that um, it's your own problem and you have to apply the theory that you learn in the classroom to solving a real world problem. A lot of times in research you think about quitting just because it's you have, you're after failure after failure. And research is all about failing until you find that one correct solution. And to find that solution is it's, it's awesome. So I think the biggest thing that you see from doing internships is how a company functions. Because you can learn one thing from a book, but I feel that you learn best from actually doing it. I started as an intern at General Motors in 2011, interning every summer since then. I've also had opportunity to intern at Vitek, and I've also done one at Kamau, and I'll be interning at Detroit Diesel this fall. Working in an internship kind of gives you the opportunity to see the corporate side of it, um, learning the company's culture, you know, the dress that's appropriate, the type of behavior that's appropriate. I think that Wayne State is a phenomenal school for practical experience. Everybody who goes to Wayne State who's an engineer is telling me that they're doing some type of internship, some type of experience, some type of research. What I started doing, you know, five years ago has potentially opened up hundreds of doors. So 
obviously you can sit down in a classroom here at Wayne State and you can work with people who are of many different uh, cultural backgrounds because we are such a fantastically diverse university. But it's completely different to go immerse yourself in a culture where you don't speak the language and you've never been before. Last summer I went to Hangzhou, China and I studied abroad at Zhejiang University of Technology. We actually got to not only just go there and take classes at the university, but we brought Wayne State faculty and they taught a cross-cultural engineering problem-solving course. We were faced with the problem of sustainable transportation. How do we make our global transportation system more sustainable? We were joined by 20 Chinese engineering students of all different disciplines and backgrounds. I still talk to the students that I met last year in China. We brought some of the students from Hangzhou and they are actually here for two weeks. And so I got the opportunity to kind of show them around the city and get them used to Detroit. It was very eye-opening to be able to work with people who have such a different educational background and cultural background. What I walk away with is not only a wealth of engineering knowledge, but also that, that cultural intelligence, that soft skill, that, that element that can be the it factor for you in your future career. And I think industry is really looking for that and they can find it in our graduates. I'm Marissa Mercer. My name is Justin White. My name is Alex Collardi. My name is Brandon Horsch. My name is Maheen Usker, and I'm a Wayne State engineer. 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 Thank you. So our next video is international students. You're sending us your questions. The reason why I wanted to come to Wayne State was because it was one of the best research institutions in Michigan. The advantage is having the Maymed campus, which has all the hospitals, that's the DMC, the Harper, the Hudson. So I was lucky enough to you know, volunteer at the Henry Ford Hospital and at the DMC at the same time. After doing a little research, I knew the big three were here in Michigan, you know. So I felt that, you know, having that close, you know, affinity to do to the automotive industries, I would have the opportunity also have these planned trips, you know, go to the plants and have great opportunities to go to internships and stuff. So it's like having practical knowledge of what you learn in class. I have a master in petroleum engineering. I could go to Texas working on, work as a petroleum engineer or at the same field that I was working before. But I was really interested to uh, get my PhD and work in a research area which is related to automotive companies. We have this collaboration that allow me to have technology that I can get good data and publish good papers. It provides uh, very useful classes that you can learn um, different skills, techniques, the facilities, the equipment uh, that are very important for my research. There's a good interaction, good connection between me and my advisor, and he's really helpful. I mean, whatever I want from my advisor, he just helps me in it. The main resource that we have here is our graduate advisor and the people and the teachers that you know, like the first professor, the first course that I took, the professor that taught me is still here in touch with me. Like I still go back to her and tell her, my, you know, this is what is happening. This is what I'm planning. Do you think it's the right thing to do? You can find students from like all over the world, which makes it really fun to be here. In my lab, uh, we have a lot of diversity. So we have people from Iraqi, people from Sri Lanka, and from China. We have also Brazilians in my lab nowadays. So it's really good because, I mean, the most interesting part is because news that before in our home countries we used to just see on TV. Nowadays, like your colleagues are talking because this affects their lives. The people here treat others like equally, so uh, there's no racism, nothing like that, and this is what I like here. I've been living here for five years. Uh, I've never had any safety 
problem. So I think it's um, it's really it's really safe, especially around campus. I got to learn it's really safe. I discovered that even on campus we have our own police department. Safety plays a very large role. University mixed with the city itself, so we're going to your lab, but you're passing through libraries and museums, at least from home to here, pass through at least three museums. Wherever you are from the world, you can find like something related to you, like restaurants from your own culture, so you feel like home. Wayne State is one of the best uh, universities in the United States. It has diversity of majors, so whatever you want to study, you will find it here. This is a good place for you to uh, achieve your goal and have fun. You know, you come here, study, you know why you're here, and it's a land of opportunities, I would say. You know, you want to make the best of yourself, Wayne State is the place. So we have been getting questions coming in from um, the email address at the bottom, engineering grad admissions at eng.wayne.edu. Many are focusing around courses and course selection. How do you pick your courses? So in general, I'll just say that the, each department has a graduate program officer. It's a faculty person who is assigned to help advise students and pick out their courses and create a plan of work. Each student's going to have a plan of work which identifies the classes that they take throughout their time here to reach their degree goals. So I'd like the students to talk about their, how they selected their classes, um, what they did, what worked. So I would like to share my experience. So right away when I came here in the first week, I met my advisor in my department and uh, he asked me the topics or the domains that I would like to study on and then he showed me some courses and the, the description of those courses and what would fit best for me and then we decided few courses and there's a plan of work where you decide all your courses for your entire program which is pretty much flexible so if you decide a plan of work and all the courses but later on if you plan to take some other course you can do that too so it is pretty flexible and you can do that and if you go to the website of uh, respective department there is a course description there are domains in that department which you can choose from which is not at all mandatory, you can choose courses from any domain, so that's an advantage here at Wayne State. So yeah, that's from my experience. Yeah, I have the same experience, so when I came, I discussed with my advisor and we developed the plan of work. And then after that, I chose the course based on my plan of work, but I can change plan of work as well when I Want. So I was interested to take some course from other department to kind of expand my uh, area of interest and knowledge. So I can I did do that, and it's pretty flexible process. So can you uh, tell me how many classes do you take a term? I usually take uh, two classes, each around four, sometimes three, a maximum of ten in the credit. Okay. And I take usually two classes per semester, uh, four credit hours for each class, so I take uh, eight credit hours per semester. How many, how many people are in your class? I have around 15, 20, because graduate uh, courses usually lower number of students attend. I have classes seven, six, eight as well. And I have experience uh, from the courses that I have taken till now. The people in my classes were around 20 to 30. That was the range. Okay. Um, I would also like to bring up in terms of registering for courses, all admitted MS in mechanical engineering students. Uh, the department asks that you wait to register for courses until you meet with your faculty advisor. So that will be after you arrive on campus in August. Uh, so uh, another question that we've been receiving is about um, internships. Have either of you, you know, completed any internships or applied for internships or felt or, uh, or co-ops? 
Maybe not the free fair. Okay, so I would like to share my experience. As an international student, you are not allowed to work as an intern unless and until you complete two semesters, and that is 16 credit hours. So this is my second semester, and after completion of this semester, I will be eligible to work starting from this summer. So we had a winter career fair here at Wayne State where many employers showed up and uh, we submitted their, uh, our resumes to them and also I applied online. So currently I'm in that process of getting hired. So yeah, uh, we also have good career resources here at engineering and also there is a common Wayne State career service. So we have advantage of both. We can use both the career services. So that's an advantage of uh, being an engineering student here at Wayne State. So that's part of my experience in engineering uh, co-ops and internships. I also plan to get an internship for this summer. In the previous semester, I usually do my research because of my PhD courses. But this summer, I'm planning to go and uh, do an internship. Uh, yes, we have lots of good resources around the Lane State University, career service in the whole university, and also we have a Especially in our engineering college, that we can go there, learn lots of stuff, edit CV, resume, cover letters, lots of stuff. We can take advantage of them over there. Uh, so we've also been receiving some questions about research. Uh, could you maybe, you know, if you've done research, elaborate a little bit about what the experience was like or what you were studying? Yeah, I can so. Uh, so as a PhD candidate, we do lots of research uh, around the campus. I'm also a graduate teaching assistant, but research is part of my life. So I usually work in the lab and also have some modeling work. We have a vast uh, area of research, even in civil engineering, let alone other fields. So I am going to talk about civil engineering. We have in transportation, structure, environmental engineering, and construction management field. So uh, my specialty is environmental engineering. We do lots of research in three different labs uh, currently. And my focus was mostly about biofuel production, sustainability, life cycle assessment, those parts. Uh, usually a student, they, they arrive based on their interest. They can talk with some faculties and follow that path until they become hired. Maybe sometimes we work voluntarily for one or two months or a semester. After that, we usually uh, be a member of that lab research group and work on that area. It's kind of good experience because we can have publication, we can earn some salary and also get a good network of people that can't be working in that area. So research is a really good position. It has a really good position in Wayne State University. Depends to your area of interest, you need to find those professors that can be working and follow them. So as a master student, uh, I'm, I have choose the coursework option. So I haven't done much of the research, but I find many students in my department uh, those who are going for research and pursuing their PhD and we have a diverse range of domains and professors working in those research areas. So there are a lot of domains where professors are working and students are uh, pursuing their PhD and master's thesis under them. So I haven't done it personally, but yeah, I've seen a lot of people doing that in my department. One thing I wanted to mention that uh, we're also receiving some questions about uh, that you touched on briefly is uh, while well, you can do internships if you're an international student after a uh, short period of time, um, after the 16 credits, after the two semesters. Uh, students are asking about part-time work on campus, and that is something that students can do early on, is actually work on campus at, uh, at a library or uh, other capacities. Uh, so that is an option, um, and that's something that they're on my listings to apply for. Uh, also wanted to mention that uh, regarding these this course registration. Um, there's instructions in your decision letter about where to go online. I also wanted to mention that uh, on uh, Monday is the first day for students to be able to register for fall semester. So you haven't technically been able to do it yet, so uh, on Monday is the first day you'll be able to do so.
we I'll, have. Uh, okay, I would like to clarify about the internship stuff. Sorry, I did not clarify it before. So internships and co-ops that like, you have to go off campus to work for those companies, right? So, so that's the different part. So I said to work off campus, you need to first wait for two semesters and 16 credit hours. But if you want to work on campus as a student assistant in cafes, in libraries, in various offices, so there is no requirement of these two semesters. You can start uh, start working right away in your first semester. So that's the thing. Um, great, thank you. So we've also been getting questions about assistantships, you know, TAs, RAs, um, as well as scholarships. Do either of you have experience with that? Okay, so, so I'm a <coughs> TA here at Venice State University. Generally speaking, those uh, TA position is available for PhD students, but there are some master's students as well who uh, get those TA and RA positions. Uh, for those, uh, there are different kind of way to get them. Uh, for RA, we usually uh, work and collaborate with faculties, those faculties that research area is kind of for interest and they have funding and they have a project going on. So we uh, go to them and work with them. As I said, it may come with some volunteer work for one month or two months or something like that. But if we do our work and our task good and the faculty advisor is satisfied, so that's a pass to get that RA position in the next semester. For TA, there is also uh, some basic engineering course level that they need TA and also some higher undergraduate course that need TAs. Those basic engineering courses, it's uh, happening in the uh, College of Engineering. There is an office for that. And for the other part, uh, usually it's department based. So we go to department and talk over the. Uh, but as I said, it's uh, kind of uh, focused on PhD student and uh, uh, research as well. So uh from my experience, uh, as Jawad said, uh, TAs and RAs positions are generally given to the PhD students and the first preference is to them, but it, it's not the case all the time. Uh, I have my few friends who are pursuing their masters in mechanical engineering and they are now a TA for a professor. And generally for a TA, uh, the thing is, it's difficult to get right away in your first semester. First, you need to take some courses under that professor and after completion of that course, the professor can judge your ability, your skills, your technical competence. And based on that, the TA position is offered you starting from the second semester. So yeah, I have my few friends who are master's student and who started their program in fall 16. And now uh, they in this starting from this semester, they are TA for one of his course. And RA positions are mostly offered to the, those students who are taking master's with thesis option or the PhD candidates. And as far as scholarships are concerned, uh, there are a few opportunities right away in the first semester for the scholarships too. But once you complete your first semester, you do have a lot of opportunities starting from second semester. We do have a lot of scholarships. And from my personal experience, uh, I did not get any opportunity to apply for scholarship in my first semester. But after completion of my first semester, I got some good grades and there was a Dean's Merit Scholarship offered for the winter semester, which I applied for. And I am the recipient of that scholarship award uh, that was offered in this semester. And again, for the next semester, I have two more scholarships to apply for. And yeah, so after completion of your first semester, you do have a lot of options to get scholarships. Though they are very competitive, but if you are doing well in your studies and you have some something uh, extra outside of your classroom, then you are definitely one of the candidates for the scholarship awards. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we want to uh, transition just a little bit and start asking you guys questions about, you know, living on campus. Um, so could you tell us, you know, your experience finding housing, you know, when you first arrived at Wayne State and maybe, you know, where you're living now as opposed to then, if it's different? So I came here in 2014. Uh, we have a Facebook page as an Iranian group and I also heard that Indian group as well, they have a Facebook page. So the first step is that we join that group and then over there we can discuss uh, lots of possibilities between our community regarding the house, regarding the pickup from the airport or shopping at the first one week or two weeks of that 
arriving time. So that's a really good opportunity for every new student. So they need to join their uh, fellow uh, communities. And they have lots of uh, sources that help you. So I did that, and I found uh, one of my uh, friends that helped me to rent a house, even when I was not here. So I rent a house, and when I arrived, I have a house ready for me. And so that's really helpful. He also helped me to do some shopping at the first, because we, when we arrive, we don't have car or driving license. So they are really helpful for shopping foods or other necessary stuff for the, uh, for the home. But there are some students who go to university dormitory, and there are some good uh, houses uh, belong to Wayne State University and dormitory, so they can also uh, follow that in their website and find their options over there. Okay, so from my experience, uh, I applied to on-campus housing to all of the three apartments. And uh, I did not apply to any dormitories, but I applied to apartments. And later on, I found that my waitlist number is too far behind. So I also started looking for uh, apartments off campus. So if you visit to website housing.wayne.edu, uh, you will find a link that takes you to third party website where you will find many off campus housing. So I found one of the apartments there. I contacted the person there and I was able to get that apartment. And uh, Temporary stay, I would say, uh, I had my brother uh, living here, so I lived with him for a few initial days until I, I got the possession of my apartment. But generally, students do help, and uh, for the initial few weeks, uh, majority of the students are ready to keep the students as a temporary, uh, temporary housing. And my suggestion would be to apply for on-campus housing and get onto the wait list. And even if you don't get the housing, uh, your application fee doesn't go waste. You will be refunded that application fee. So it's no harm to apply for on-campus housing. Get yourself in the wait list. And uh, as Jawad said, there are many Facebook groups. And later on, there are uh, WhatsApp groups for each country. So students form them. So make sure you're part of those groups and you know most about what's currently going on. And in that group, people generally post who are uh, in need of a roommate or people who have already got housing, but they are looking for roommate, or who haven't got any housing, but uh, they want to get into one. So you generally get help from those groups. So yeah, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, um, we just want to reiterate, you know, um, on-campus Wayne State housing it is very competitive. A lot of students are on the waiting list. Um, we recommend you sign up for that as soon as possible. But we also highly recommend that, you know, like Palash says, you look into off-campus housing as soon as you can. Um, there are a lot of, you know, housing opportunities on campus and around campus. Um, there's so many apartments within just, you know, a five-minute walking distance that are available to you. So we really recommend you try to find housing as soon as you can once you know that you're coming here. And uh, I guess shifting gears, I wanted to ask about uh, along the lines of living on campus. Uh, what uh, what was what is it like? Uh, uh, for uh, a social a social life as a student, as a graduate student coming here, did you join any student groups? Okay, so I'd like to share my experience. Uh, we do have a lot of student orgs here, and I have a lot of opportunity outside of my classroom to do some activities. As you have seen in the video, students are doing a lot of volunteering, social work. So, yeah, uh, I also did a lot of volunteering this semester and in the last semester. And we do have a lot of students orgs, as I said. So I'm part of two students org. One is the IEEE, that is for electronics and electrical engineers. And one is uh, a student org called Detroit Aerial Innovations, where we focus on uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. So that is uh, drone technology. So there is a Formula SAE team. There is an EcoCar team. We do have a lot of engineering as well as non-engineering uh, student orgs. And you can be a part of that. And it's fun to be part of those student organizations because uh, you get to know about many kind of diverse kind of people. You get the skills of teamwork, communication, and it adds value to your resume too. So there are a lot of benefits of being into those student orgs, and I'm, I'm having a great time being part of those. As a PhD candidate, I should add that we also have some groups regarding the TAs, for example, 
graduate employment organization community. We have, we call it GEOC, that's a good community for TAs. We have lots of stuff, lots of social events over there, like coffee and culture, some gathering, we go to do bowling and other stuff. Also, uh, in engineering level, we have some groups, for example, for civil engineering, we have ASCE. They do have lots of stuff. So social life in Wayne State is really good, and we have lots of opportunity to do many things. I'd like to add one more thing. Uh, as you all would know about OISS, that is Office of International Students and Scholars, they also host a lot of events for international students. Uh, I could remember when I came here uh, right away in the first or second month, they had a trip to one of the malls and they just asked for the few uh, traveling uh, fees that was roughly around 5 to 10 dollars if I could remember and there was a day long trip to the shopping mall and we had a few trips to skiing in the winter and then uh, they took uh, to a lot of different activities so yeah they host a lot of activities for international students I think there is a coffee hour as you said in uh, like it's every after two weeks or kind of stuff so where students meet and greet and they have some fun activities to do so yeah, a lot of activities and social life here at Wayne State. So you mentioned a little bit about it, but have you guys taken advantage of going to see any of the professional sports teams that are downtown? So the hockey, the football, baseball, or any of the art museums or any of the music stuff that goes on? Yeah, I did actually. Uh, with the GOC for graduate employment for TAs, we we went to Detroit Pistons the other days. It was really fun. And that's also free for TAs, so we have that opportunity. And uh, the other, I went to theater mostly, not the baseball, but the Tigers and those others. It's really cool. I really like to go there. So I haven't been to off campus to one of those teams, but. Uh, we do have a Wayne State football team and we have a very a big field here at Wayne State. So I attended almost all of the football matches in the last semester. So as a Wayne State student, uh, by showing our identity card, we are allowed to enter that stadium free of cost. So we don't have uh, to pay anything for that. And it was fun watching the American football game and yeah, it was a nice experience there. Have you taken advantage of the other, so you mentioned the football stuff, have you gone to the rec center, Wayne State rec center, and, uh, yeah. yeah? Yeah, so I want to also advertise that we have a karate club here in Wayne State University that I like martial arts, so I attend that one. So I invite all of the international students coming to join us. We have a fitness center, recreational center, Matahi, so swimming, all the stuff is available. I did use those in the past. Yeah, I also used the swimming pool in the Mathai Center. A very good swimming pool of large size and it's, as I said, it's, uh, it's also free for Wayne State students and we also have a recreational facility here on campus and a lot of activities. Uh, apart from the all the gym equipment and all the fitness stuff, we also have a lot of training going on that there is a power yoga, there is a dance class and so many classes are there. And that, those are also free for Wednesday students. Anyone is uh, free to join those. Our next video actually segues nicely into what we're talking about. Uh, we'll show you some of the places that we're talking about, some of the activities around campus, and hear from some students and faculty that would like to be on campus. It's just a really exciting time to be downtown. Fun place to go, fun place to explore. There are lots of activities in the town area. You've got all these centers for culture and arts. And as students, of course, there's so many places where you can go and play. Once people come down here and really experience what it has to offer, they don't want to leave. <laughs> okay, this, I have a good story that I like. Um, it was actually in this very room. Um, oh. I was at a show this summer. So we were watching the show, having a good time. My boyfriend kind of like, I think I think I see Meg White, you know, who's in the White Stripes. Oh, yeah. And that's pretty much our favorite band. It's just so cool that I can like come out to a show that's just like, you know, up the road from my apartment, be like hanging out pretty much my idols, like, you know? Right. So that's one of the things I really love about being in Midtown, because that happens. <laughs>
If Shakespeare were to set one of his plays in Midtown, it would have to be The Winter's Tale. And the reason is uh, because The Winter's Tale is a romance. And what it really means is that it takes something from all the different genres, tragedy, comedy, um, there's a little bit of fantasy in it. And it's very eclectic in that sense. Um, and I think Midtown would be perfect because Midtown is that eclectic blend of different kinds of flavors, categories, genres. My name is Reno Kagusai and I go to Wayne State University. I'm at the English department. I am writing my dissertation in English literature uh, with a focus on early modern literature, Shakespeare in particular, Shakespeare and philosophy. We're at the Bonstead right now and you have the Hillberry right here. And we're counting the number of stages around and I think we hit 11, including Fox, including Fisher in the Fisher Theatre, including all the recital stages available at the university. Uh, it's just an amazing place to be. I mean, where else are you going to get such an amazing concentration of different kinds of stages uh, to explore your interest in the arts and theater? It was really interesting uh, doing tour to Detroit, which is a big bike yeah. ride, and it comes oh, yeah. right through Midtown. And then... I'm you know, big into cycling. You know, I yep. commute by bike year round. And, you know, some people think it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so my name is uh, Howard Matthew. I'm a professor of chemical engineering and biomedical engineering at Wayne State University. And when I travel around the country giving set talks and seminars, uh, people, you know, sort of raise their eyebrows when they hear I'm from Detroit. Uh, what they don't know is that it's actually a great place to work and a great place to live. Research in the biomedically related aspects of chemical engineering is a really hot area and I personally have a couple of colleagues who have started companies um, in the tech town uh, development as a direct offshoot of the work that's being done and the ideas generated here at Wayne State. I see a growing area, in the, that, that's what yeah. I see. That's, that's Plus it's a great place to work too. You know, yeah. We've got education, yeah. medicine, High tech, low tech. Uh, I work in the College of Engineering in a program called Smart Sensors and Integrated Microsystems. And in 2004, we spun out a company called Visca. My name is Kathy Huber. I work at both Wayne State University and the College of Engineering as a program coordinator in Tech Town, which is Wayne State's research and development park. Well, I've always been into the arts, and I've always been into fine art, painting, drawing, sculpture. When I see what goes on working with engineers and scientists, it's really, really similar um, what goes on in the art world. You, you may have an end goal or an idea of what you might want, but you don't know how to get there. So there's a lot of trial and error, and in that trial and error, you can come up with these beautiful mistakes that can actually make something happen and make something extraordinary. It just seems evident living down here that like, if you want to try something, yeah, this I, is the place to do I think it. That's exactly right. I think um, just be because of the market here, it's, it's very feasible to, to try something that you, that you really want to do and be creative with your ideas. Probably a lot of them being run by students and started by students. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think a lot of the businesses that are opening up, like, like our store. Um, my name's Andy Lynn, and uh, with my sister Emily Lynn, uh, I own a store called City Bird in Midtown Detroit. At our store, we sell our own label of Detroit-themed uh, housewares, accessories, and paper goods. Often we're approached by artists, um, but we also reach out to Wayne State students and, and actively try to sell their work. We've actually seen a lot of traffic um, from, from people visiting Detroit for the first time just because um, there's been, it uh, seems to be a, a buzz about the city. Well, I chose Wayne State um, in part because of the location, like I was excited to be in Midtown and to be in Detroit. Andy and I both live in Woodbridge, which is a historic neighborhood just west of the Wayne State campus with a lot of beautiful sort of arts and crafts and Victorian homes. It's, it's amazing, you can live in the most incredible apartment or a rental house. Oh, oh I know, I couldn't imagine commuting, especially when we like practice at 6 a.m. Right. Oh no. <laughs> My name is Justin Rahoff. I am a junior here at Wayne State University and I am on Wayne State swim team. I am in the honors program as well as an athlete. I got a presidential scholarship. It pays for tuition for four years. I love living in Midtown. There's so much to do there, and so it really helped to expose us to the city of Detroit in a way that the average student might not. You guys do after classes or after hours, so, besides studying. Right. <laughs> I really love going to shows. Like, the, the Detroit music scene is really kind of why I came to school here in the first place. 
My name's Emily Janes, uh, and I'm a, in my junior year at Wayne State. I'm studying biology and French, uh, and I'm in the Honors College. I come to these shows, and I'm part of the music community. And I go to class, and I'm part of the Honors community at Wayne State. And you know, I'm helping with my public transit, and I'm kind of part of this grassroots movement. Yeah, I'm in Honors at Wayne, like Justin, and um, it's the smaller um, college within the university. And you really feel like you know everybody. You get to know, you know, your advisor and your professors better. And there's, you know, like a smaller group of students. So you start recognizing each other. You're in the same classes. Yeah, when I was looking at colleges, I did have a lot of choices. I looked at schools out east, I looked at schools in Boston and New York. None of them really gave me the good feeling that I got when I was at Wayne State. And just being in Detroit, it's there's a different sense of community here. There's activity, I mean, you've got the DIA, you've got the Public Library, you've got the Science Center, you've got the African American History Museum, you've got the Historical Museum, like, there's an infinite amount of stuff to do. And then beyond that, you've got venues like this where you can go see shows. The possibilities are endless. I just think that Midtown's like a really exciting, uh, creative and artistic place. And um, I think that Wayne State is an anchor institution in this neighborhood and it really adds a lot to the vibrancy and activity going on. Yeah, the activity in this area is just wonderful. I mean, there's so many things to do. There's a good opportunity to, to sort of try out an idea that you have or open something or start something. And there's a lot of room for um, for individuals to sort of make an impact. The fact that, you know, so many students live close to campus uh, uh, really makes it easier to interact and to yeah. conduct research. Yeah, making the most of what, you know, Wayne can offer them and then what Detroit can offer them yeah. too. I live here because it feels it feels good. It feels right. The unbelievable culture. The community here is exciting and One welcoming. The biggest medical campuses. These larger universities. You don't get that kind of personal interaction with your teachers. I love our neighborhood. A lot of Wayne State students who live there. People from all walks of life. Everyone gets along. In Why this not area. Detroit? I mean, Detroit is such a thriving city. When you enter Wayne State University, when you go into any classroom, the first thing that strikes you is the diversity. I live, learn, work, and play in, in Midtown. Midtown. In Midtown, Detroit. So uh, this segues into safety. Safety here is a uh, it's a big question that everybody has because Detroit has this stigma about it. Uh, we do have uh, a large police force here at Wayne State. They collaborate with the Detroit City Police. They have a response rate that's unbelievable, unbelievably fast. Uh, and so do you guys have any comments about safety here? I would like to share my experience. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of international students have a lot of safety concerns here. But as for my experience, I've been here for almost seven months and I never faced any safety issue yet. And I would like to introduce you about the Safe Walk program that we have here at Wayne State. So Wayne State has its own police and the Safe Walk program is like, uh, if you call them and they will be at your location within 90 seconds and they will walk you through your apartment. Uh, and once you reach your apartment or your destination, they will go from that place. So I would like to share my experience. Uh, I was working late night for the project we had and I was at my project partner's apart uh, apartment and we finished that project somewhere around 3 or 4 in the morning and I wanted to get back to my apartment as I had some important stuff to do in the next day. So I just called the Wayne State Police and they said the resolution time is 90 seconds but they were at my position in less than 60 seconds. So they just asked me like what is your location where do you want to go and they said okay you start walking and the cop followed me from that apart my project partner's apartment to my apartment and the, once I reached my apartment, okay, so from that point they, they went away. So it was it is really safe here and and you will get more information on this on your uh, orientation day. So there will be Wayne police and they will be talking more about this safe walk program. So yeah, uh, from my experience till now, uh, campus is really very safe and I haven't faced any issues yet. Actually, that, yes, campus is really safe in all parts of the daytime and also night. But as it also always follow what the police says and advises, it's available in the police website and also in the email that they send all around. So always follow them as well. 
We can hear from uh, Ms. Chief Holt if you want. Sure. Hello, I'm Anthony Holt, Chief of Police at Wayne State University. On behalf of Wayne State Police, I welcome you to the university. The Wayne State community is a wonderful and safe place to live, learn, work, and play. Our department has provided a safe and secure environment since 1966. Wayne State officers are not only highly trained and fully licensed by the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards and sworn police officers under state law. Each Wayne State University officer is also a commissioned Detroit police officer with full authority within the city of Detroit. And our department requires that every one of our officers has earned at least a bachelor's degree before being accepted in our department. We provide the university community with police service 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. This website explains our detailed approach to how we keep our students safe. We do it with a combination of highly trained officers, the very best technology, and consistent education and prevention training. It's this approach to student safety that ranks Wayne State University one of the safest campuses in the state of Michigan. Thanks for visiting our site, and we look forward to seeing you on campus soon. So here are um, some extra links that you can look at afterward. Um, so you all know this is all being recorded and you'll be sent a link so you can rewatch and you know go through the videos at your own pace, look through the links at your own pace later. Um, so these are just some great resources for getting a little bit more acquainted with Wayne State's campus and what's going on here. Uh, so next, uh, we wanted to ask our students, you know, do you have any advice about arriving on campus from uh, a foreign country, um, you know, about maybe your visa interview or when to arrive before classes, anything like that? Okay, so I would like to say plan for your visa interview way ahead of uh, time because uh, I don't think it's difficult. If you prepare well, I would like to share my experience. Like my visa interview lasted only for around 30 seconds. I was at the Mumbai embassy and they just asked pretty easy questions like why did you choose this university, what's your future plan. So if, uh, make sure you have a good answer for the question like why did you choose this university and make sure you include all the aspects that you took into consideration before joining and you say to them be honest to yourself and that should be fine. And I would also like to give one advice, uh, plan to come in groups so that it will be easy for you as well. and. So you have someone, I know uh, for a lot of students, it's their first experience coming this far from their home country. So it's things are pretty easy if you're coming in groups and plan to purchase an air ticket way ahead of time because as the August month uh, comes closer, the price of air tickets hikes and hikes and hikes. So make sure you you purchase your air ticket way before ahead of time because to save some money. And the process is pretty simple. Uh, you will need to carry a few important stuff. Of course, your I-20 is important, admit later, visa. And uh, after coming here, arriving in Detroit, you will also face one more uh, interview. I don't think it's called, it should be called as an interview. It's just like a formal check, like, okay, they will check your visa, they will check your status, they will stamp it, they will ask a few simple questions like, why are you here, uh, what program are you studying, and that should not be that difficult. And uh, okay, after coming here, there will be a mandatory uh, student check-in because you will have few holds on your account for the check-in hold, uh, TB test hold, and a health insurance hold. So that those all are the things that you will need to do after you come here in your first week. So make sure you plan to come arrive at the campus. At least uh, my suggestion would be two weeks before the first day of your class. Uh, I was here almost a month uh, from the first day of my class, but I had some other things to do. But I think two weeks should be sufficient and one more thing I would like to add about the TB test here is uh, it is mandatory for you to purchase uh, health insurance and you get uh, TB test done here in the campus health center for free of cost. But uh, for that they have few waiting times and they have only limited number of slots per day. So if you get into wait list it may happen that you your number is in like four to five days and until that you will you will have a hold on your account. 
So what I did was uh, there is a test called Mantuk's test for TB. Uh, that test is accepted here. So if you uh, do that test in your home country and if you bring in the results and if they are acceptable to them, they will accept that and without even testing, uh, they will remove your hold. So I did that. Uh, I did the Mantuk's test for TB in my home country. I just showed them the reports and the hold was on immediately. So I didn't have to wait for like four to five days to, for the for my number to come. So and it doesn't ha harm like the health services and all the testing stuff is pretty cheap in other countries as compared to United States. The healthcare is very expensive here, so it won't hurt to get yourself tested and bring in those reports. You will be fine if you accept it, and if it's not, then uh, if you have the health, uh, as I said, the health insurance is mandatory, so your testing will be done free of cost. And regarding airport pickup and preparing for arrival information. Uh, I would suggest uh, contact some uh, students who are already studying here or uh, make sure you have some arrangement done for that uh, before time and make sure the students know very well your details, your uh, arrival, uh, flight, flight timings, flight number and make sure you uh, give them all the details and update them because you won't have any phone connectivity once you arrive here. So you won't have your phone. So you may have internet connection at the airport but it's not guaranteed. So make sure you're the students who are uh, coming here or the, those who are coming here to pick you up, they know your timing and everything. And that's what I have to say and if you have any more questions, you can just send, a, send us emails. So that was completely good answer. So uh, <laughs> I just want to add in terms of vaccine, usually when I when I was there, they, they said there are lots of vaccine or some lots of uh, proof they, they need to bring here. but. When I arrive here, I just need that TB test, so don't go and do lots of other stuff, uh, vaccine or other uh, tests, so just a TB test is needed. And when you arrive, if you have a AIG insurance, which is uh, given to you by ISS office, so that's going to be free. For TAs, there is a different insurance, so that insurance usually is not covering the TV test and it costs around thirty dollars or something. So it's not that much expensive as well. Uh, for pickup, I should say that yes. Uh, before your plan to come, just uh, make contact with those uh, friends, especially in that Facebook page. We are really happy to help a student when they arrive. You have the uh, uh, internet access in Detroit airport, so you can easily connect with internet and then send message to the friend when you arrive in some channels like WhatsApp or other stuff, even Facebook Messenger, so we can know when you arrive. And it's good also to send the ticket uh, detailed information to a student then you want uh, when you're arriving. <coughs> and yeah, for visa stuff, just do as soon as possible, so there shouldn't be any delay mm -hmm. in your process. Great, so um, oiss.wayne.edu is the website for our Office of International Students and Scholars. It is a really great resource if you have any questions about you know, coming to campus, your I-20s arrival time, uh, your visa interview, health insurance, things like that. Um, so we encourage you to go to their website and check out some of their information. Um, they also, you know, they have a phone number and email address there so you can contact them personally as well. Here's Erin. So on the screen, uh, we have Erin Rook. She's our Career Services Coordinator for the College of Engineering. She is the person who posts all the resources that are on our website. We have resources from resume building to cover letters to how to interview, all sorts of resources out there. We have our own um, system to connect jobs and internships and other opportunities with our students. It's called Handshake. And so when you become a student here, you automatically get a sign in for Handshake. And so that allows you to post your resume up there and let employers see you. And um, you learn more about that when you're here. Erin also hosts a variety of different sessions throughout the year, uh, so like how to negotiate a salary, how to, um, um, how to find a job, do some job searching. 
she also hosts at least two career fairs uh, a year, one in the fall, one in the winter. The one in the fall is generally more large than the one in the winter. Uh, some of the companies that uh, recruit our students are listed there on the logos. We have other career fair type opportunities available like through the Engineering Society of Detroit. There's a student organization here tied with them. They host a, their own career fair and then our student board members who uh, are part of it get to attend that career fair for free. Um, there's also the, um, what is it, the uh, um, National Graduate, there's, a, there's another host, um, host group that also hosts another career fair and it's designed for engineering, uh, international students. Um, and so Aaron sends out announcements about that. There's a lot of things that are going on. You could spend, you know, 40 hours a week doing nothing but attending functions, uh, but you should do your classes as well. Uh, let's see here. What else? Do you guys have anything, any experiences with uh, anything that happened in the career services? I have few experiences. As I said earlier, as an engineering student, you have advantage of utilizing two career services. One is of uh, College of Engineering and one is of uh, Wayne State Career Services Offices. So yeah, uh, I use the College of Engineering Career Services as well as the other one too. So uh, indeed I got a lot of help in building my resume, my cover letters and uh, even before the career fair they host a session where you could rapid, uh, it's called a rapid resume reviewing so you can show your resume and make some last moment directions and any questions if you have. So. Yeah, overall, uh, engineering career services are a great resource and helpful for finding jobs and careers, uh, internships and co-ops. I did some mock interview actually, they help you to do interview, they see my resume and help me to edit that, so it's a great experience that they have. Yeah, um, and you can also, you know, set up individual appointments with Erin as well, so she can spend, you know, 20 or 30 minutes looking at your resume with you, helping you prepare for an interview, prepare for the career fair, things like that. So we look forward to some of the next steps. As we talked about before, uh, registration fall won't open until... Uh, the uh, 27th, and, but uh, again, you can go to that link for instructions on how to go through the process in Academica. Also, some information is on your decision letter. Um, the course list is available now, so you can go online and see what classes you know you'll have the option to take for fall. You do just have to wait until Monday, March 27th, to register. And on program websites, you'll find samples of the plans of work that you can choose from, uh, which can also act as a guide as to what you will want to take throughout your program and what to start with. And uh, also we have some other links here posted that uh, we've touched on before about housing and OISS. Uh, we will have orientation on uh, Tuesday, August 29th with uh, further information and speakers from different departments. Uh, anything else we want to talk about with orientation? Um, we will send out an, uh, emails in the future with uh, some further information in our SVP uh, event page. Yeah. Um, we do also want to reiterate that this webinar is being recorded, um, and later today you will be sent a link so that you can, you know, rewatch the webinar, um, go to any of these specific links, you know, see our email address to send us another question. Um, we do want to address that we have received many more questions than we have answered. Uh, so many of these questions are very specific that Eric and I will be emailing you back personally in the next few days um, you know, to respond to your inquiries and make sure that you feel comfortable with all the information you can get about Wayne State University. So we have the faculty video. If we would like to go through it, or we can uh, post it online. Yeah, and so the faculty watch. is all the... All in one sequence. Okay. So our, our last video, we're not going to actually host it here through this uh, um, open house right now. It is a few minutes from each of our faculty representing all the different disciplines within the College of Engineering. And it just takes a long time and we found that uh, it seems to um, get caught in the buffer and everything slows down. So, so 
we'll have that posted on the website afterwards so that you can look at it and go through the one that you want to hear instead of listening to all of them. But uh, just so you know that it's coming up here. So as uh, Ellen mentioned, there are a lot of specific questions that are coming in, which is good. And so, but for the purposes of this, we're not going to answer the specific questions. Uh, they're going to write to you directly with your answers. If you have any more questions, keep them coming in. Eric and Alan will respond to them. And um, is that all we have now? Uh, yeah. We can uh, wrap it up. If there's yeah. anything else we would like to, uh, want to mention. So thank you to our students to, to share their views. And thank you for attending. Uh, appreciate it. Hope to see you here this fall. And again, if you have more questions, send us an email. We'll respond to you. Yeah, we're happy to help. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.